All cars should begin to line up at the technical inspection station. Will Herb Nab please come to the garage office for a phone call? All right, back down here at the Chief's Pit. Petty Brothers, Timmy Petty, Mark Petty, Richie Petty. We were discussing how the changes through the years of cars and motors and stuff, but we got to talking about the changes of uh, transportation to the racetrack and how they used to get the race cars with these transporters today, how it's like a, a mini garage now. They got everything on them, but if you go back to the beginnings, it uh, it's a whole lot different, ain't it, Timmy? Yes, and... and remember one of their toolboxes that they throw in the trunk was like an old bread box or, right. or, or a soda pop crate or something like that and they threw about every wrench they had left over and headed to the racetrack. So basically when they first started with Grandfather they drove the race car to the race. To the race. And that goes back to Daddy and Dale Inman. They both talked about driving the race car and one of the stories was that Lee told them not to run over so many RPM, so many miles an hour. And first thing they did was haul ass. <laughs> well, yeah, so they had to go through the break in process. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they broke it in right off the yeah. bat. Between here and Charlotte. Where was they going? Riverside, I guess, even back then? Out west. Riverside, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But if we go back to the, like I said, the very beginning, they, they, they would drive the race car itself, but then they got to where they had the tow bar and, yes. and they would put it on the bumpers and. And then they would pull the cars. And how many times did you hear Grandfather tell us at lunch that uh, they would be going up in the mountains, like in New York and stuff, and they, they couldn't quite get over the mountain, so he'd have to stop the car, and he'd have to get out, and Grandmother would have to pull the tow car, and he'd have to take the race car to get, over, them to, yeah, push, yeah. to get over yeah. the mountain. Unbelievable. Oh, that yeah. Obviously, it's true. But I, I guess that would have been in the 50s up to about 50 four or five and then they, they were still i guess then into, into the 55 because there's a there's a picture of uh of of them daytona with the chrysler 300 and richard's a teenager and they're still pulling them with the cars well in 59 it was it a tow bar on the back of pop's truck was that a tow bar or a trailer well, that was a pickup pulling with a tow bar yeah right and no it was a trailer then he was had a, it? yeah he had a trailer in 59. because i remember daddy talking about the king actually they took an old tractor or something because they didn't have a, a whole lot of extra metal and actually built that trailer in either 61 or 2. Maybe earlier than that. I, I don't know. But they, 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 they built their own trailer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can remember some of the other haulers as it progressed. It was always messing around with, the obviously, the tow bar and the, the reese hitch or, you know, the, the ball. Now, do you remember that story, Mark, that Grandfather told us about uh, George Toombs? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, the one where and I forget the racetrack. Oh yeah, where he yeah <laughs> he yeah yeah he 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 wanted George Toon to start the tow car just because they didn't have enough cars. and said they looked up and George was leading the race, right? <laughs> yeah, and he wouldn't stop. And then they <laughs> had, yeah. so they had to get out there and wave him in because they had to. That was how they got. That was how he was gonna get back home. So he, 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 once he was leading, why would you quit? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I forgot that story. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, like you said, then you went from the tow bar, and then they finally went into the trailers. So they and the, and the trailers got. But didn't Richard? Didn't he weld up the? Didn't Daddy say he welded up the first trailer? That's what I was saying. Yeah. They, they but, built it out of scrap metal. And these were open trailers. Yeah, just open trailers. And yeah. uh, and then as they, you know, that was through the early '60s, and they probably used it on up. And I don't know exactly what year they started buying Buck Reeds. Uh, Reed trailers down here. Mm -hmm. What? Right over here. I'd say that was in the seventies. Well, in the early seventy, they both had them Reed trailers uh, to go to Daytona with the Superbird. So had to be right there uh, after they had that one hauler for because Ford Richie Bars was in here telling us when they was going getting ready to go for the seventy, they went and got a, picked up a brand new trailer for the forty car. Right. Yeah. And then after you know, and then they went to Clyde. For, yeah, they did it for a while, but. Uh, I think it was later on in the season when they got them two uh, Dodge cab over yeah. diesels. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't know. I was just a kid, too. But anyway, uh, as we went further on down the road with, with those haulers, then they started getting the short enclosed trailers, you know. I mean, and gosh, that was on up in the 80s and 90s when that was happening. Well, you know, in 69, they had the Ford. There's a picture of that one. 
and it was a short, short, right. short cabin. Right. We, pr we probably will share a picture. Yeah, of that. we'll have a picture of that. And then, like you said, then they came back to the '70s, and then they went to the, the Dodge ones. Right. And uh, 1976, I believe it was, was the first official tractor trailer. Other than AJ Foyt, he was the only other guy that ever went to a stock car race with a tractor trailer. Up a full point. trailer, full closed with in. With a closed in trailer. Right. With like a real off, tractor you know, trailer. Like cabinets, work area, and everything in it. Like the sort of the the, the precursor of what, what is today. And, and again, it took years for everybody in the garage area to get the, the, that big of a, a rig. You know, when we first started racing, uh, we, we had a pickup truck pulling an open trailer. And yeah, it wasn't we, even our pickup truck or trailer. <laughs> that was all barred. <laughs> we, we, it wasn't even barred. Well, I guess it was barred. But we'd, we'd sneak over here on a Saturday morning. They'd be gone racing to Petty Enterprises. We'd barred their truck and trailer. The parts truck. Yeah, and we'd haul our car down to Caraway, and then we'd have to come back and get it all cleaned up. And then at one time, we left the tailgate down and caught the ton. Yeah, it been it. And I think I think Dale was pretty upset with us. Yeah, oh, man, yeah. I'm sure of that. So we... Uh, then we we progressed into getting a, a, a box van truck. Which was used. Yeah. And it was then, an old Petty Enterprise souvenir truck. Yeah, truck, souvenir right? truck. Yeah. And then we pulled it with a, a a longer dovetail type trailer. And then then we progressed into the uh, what Roy Hill's old drag racing truck. It was a closed Shot up. Got a ramp truck inside, and which was a great truck. I mean, gosh, we got many memories of going, beating up down the road that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah good, good memories. Oh yeah, and then today, now you got these full-fledged, like I said, workshops now, and every part on a race car they pretty much got in these things, don't they? Oh yeah, and and I, I think it's really kind of went the other way a little bit, like during the uh, late two thousands. You know, the, I mean, you remember Jack Roush had that extra truck, mm -hmm. and it had a complete little machine shop over and, and a welder and. He was always monkey with intake manifolds mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he's not the only one, but I just remember going up in there and, and yep. your chin just falling down going, oh my God. Because we went, we was lucky enough to go test with those guys right. when you drove and then we uh, had our own car, but we was testing with Stavola Brothers and the rest of the guys in the You know, camp. one of my better memories when I was a kid, and it had to be about 76 or 77, we were going to Daytona in uh, July and we'd always kind of run convoy in the van and stuff. Daddy would be following the big trucks and stuff. Me and Mark was little kids, and you was probably, what, uh, 14, older, 14 or 15. But anyway, we, we got to get into the big uh, the box truck that you're talking about yeah. at uh, Jacksonville and ride all the way into Daytona Beach. So we was some big-time dudes it there. It was awesome, man. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, back then, probably the area you're talking about was Dale Inman. And Wade Thornburg was the prime, and even Richie Bars, when they had two cars, him and I guess his brother drove some mm -hmm. of the other, and Daddy too, some. Right. Yeah. But uh, horse actually, horse Fisher was. Well, the, he he came was he driving truck. He was that day. He was okay. Driving. Well, he came later, and I, and I was going to get into that as we went. He as the first really full time truck driver only, which I guess these people kind of started that because right. everybody else, your truck driver was. Kind of a handyman could do about anything. Did everything. Well, like I said, Wade and Dale drove and, truck and they for years, were right? Car mechanics too, you know. Yep. But Horse was pretty much an official truck driver, supplying the truck and the rig. So, I guess they kind of ushered that area in. Now, I guess I guess we're going all over the place here, yeah, and, and, and I apologize, but I keep, they keep the stories keep coming to me. But didn't Daddy rebuild a, a hauler in Riverside that year? Yeah, he said they blowed up on the way out there couple hours from track and he got towed in and he said um i guess they sent a short block out there and he was taking the heads off and making one out of two <laughs> but he said like that richard would go out and practice and dale would do the timing and all and he'd go over and work on the truck <laughs> right. yeah so Re they could have it done for yeah. well, a driving. similar incident happened going to bristol one year the last time the king sat on the pole and Daddy and I had to change head gaskets on the hauler because they took the smaller rig up there. Okay. And so we had to get head gaskets, and I was over there doing that. And but that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like Daddy always said, we, we didn't really know any better. That's, right. what, that's what had, that's to, what had to be done right then. Speaking of Bristol, even up through the early 90s, they wouldn't let the big trucks in the garage. Right. So you had to take a shorter or a 
rental. Yeah, just like, to see why. Like, like a rider truck or something. I, I, like on up in the eighties when I worked with Harry and even at Stavola's, I'd always get elected to drive that truck yep. and, and drive it home. You know, full of all most of the stuff. Like you said, not all the trimmings for a, a big rig, but yeah, it, coming down from Bristol's pretty little drive. Now don't let that don't day. don't let Timmy fool you. He he was a truck driver. <laughs> For, yeah, but for I, I mean, I, as, as some of my friends that actually do it all the time, they call me a trucker one of <laughs> Well, yeah, but when? you still did it. You, he went he went cross country uh, I, I, several times with uh, Big Jesse. Yeah, and then he uh, you, you you when you turned sixteen, right when you got your license stamped, you was going out with Clyde with Joe Millick and down to Texas. Pick up a, a used race car from them. Yeah, uh, but driving the rig was always thrilling to me. I, I mean. I can remember, as like y'all said, as a kid, getting in the truck and riding out of here, out of the compound with Dale, and getting it, going to Daytona, you know, getting ready to head south. And part of the bypass, that going to the right wasn't even an option then. You had to get, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so late. I remember getting on that and, and uh, Dale passing, some or somebody passing Dale, and, and, and they was giving him a signal, like, let's giddy up and go, you know? And I mean, that's just, it, I'll never forget that, you know? Probably went down there and won the race. But. Right. Oh, yeah. But uh, I guess we go back into the to the to the big haulers today. They don't even – I mean, used to, we took everything. We took tires and wheels and everything. Now – Toolboxes. Pick, toolboxes, everything. Now you don't even – they don't even put them on the, the main truck. When they got enough room for it. Right. Well, <laughs> and, they, and I think they, they carry so much, out. And they yeah. carry so much more stuff, they probably ain't got enough room for it, right? Yeah, and, and so, some people can probably – call in and comment on how that's really done because I don't go to the racetrack no more. Well, I ain't been 10 either. years, so yeah. One of our good friends, I guess the first year he came to work here, George Caldwell, was yeah. 1983 when they got that big, the big trailer and uh, had Richard and Kyle's picture on the on it and they took two cars in it. They could stack two. That was the first trailer they could stack two cars in. It was a stackable, right. kind of a death trap. Well, really. it was, but it was before these new elevator type yeah. deals. But George, he 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 been in and out with us for years, and I guess when Mark was running, he he helped us uh, going to a few races in driving some trucks. But poor uh, George passed away on us in two thousand one, and we sure do miss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he he was in and out of the, our entire family, and there's nothing to say but good about Big George. So we we've always got along good with all the truck drivers and stuff because. Well, a good truck driver can save you some time. Oh, they? and, and the, it's almost like a, I don't know, I don't want to say mafia, but if you're a truck driver, there's always some horse trading going on. And Man, if you knew a truck driver, you could get by anything done, you know, within reason. Like, get all the free stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, especially back in, you know, the soda pop and the beer days and whatever. You know, Copenhagen and stuff, yeah. yeah. So, Gatorade cooler. Yeah. So, anyway, it's... Uh, I don't know where we're going to end up with this one, but I mean, this 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 thing could go on, and there's plenty of stories of well, there's more stories to be told. Well, the, like I say, the trucks ain't no no different than the race cars. They they started out with nothing. Very modest. Here, seventy five years later, look what it's become. Oh yeah, and, and it's just and the way they the NASCAR organizes getting them in and out is just phenomenal. You know, they kind of got a little routine and whatever how to get in and out, but. Uh, well, there's a, another little inside thinking of our memories. And so. When 41 and 43 are set up for the move to Charlotte, and the equipment truck rolls out of the Randleman garage to take its place in the garage area at the Charlotte Speedway, the crew has a feeling of confidence that comes with being on a winning team.